Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 22 of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last lecture I discussed with you the concept of independent events and we also considered the special case of the multiplication theorem in case of independent events. We did an interesting example concerning the gender of the newborn babies and the nature of birth, live born versus stillborn. And through this example, we also noticed that there is an important concept called marginal probability. In today's lecture, I will begin with the Bayes theorem. This theorem uh, deals with conditional probabilities in an interesting manner. As you now see on the screen, the Bayes theorem states that if the events A1, A2, so on up to AK form a partition of a sample space S, that is, the events AIE are mutually exclusive and their union is S, and if B is any other event of S such that it can occur only if one of the AI occurs, then for any I, P of AI given B is equal to P of AI into P of B given AI divided by the summation of P of AI into P of B given AI for I going from 1 to k. Students, I am sure that you are saying that this is a very difficult theorem. Hai. Actually, it is not like this. If you look at it step by step, uh, you will see that as I have stated so many times earlier, everything will fall in place. The formula that I just uh, presented to you is for the case of k mutually exclusive and exhaustive events. It can be written in the manner that you now see on the screen. Probability of AI given B is equal to P of AI into P of B given AI divided by P of A1 into P of B given A1 plus P of A2 into P of B given A2 plus so on up to P of AK into P of B given AK. Yani, agar aap usko, jo uska denominator hai, usko khol le, aur khol kar likh le, to then this is the formula. And if we take the case when k is equal to only 2, then the formula becomes p of ai given b is equal to p of ai into p of b given ai over p of a1 into p of b given a1 plus p of a2 into p of b given a2. So, ali peda hota hai ki hum karna kya chahte hai. Let me explain this to you with the help of an example. In a developed country where cars are tested for the emission of pollutants, 25 percent of all cars emit excessive amounts of pollutants. When tested, 99 percent of all cars that emit excessive amounts of pollutants failed, but 17 percent of the cars that did not emit excessive amounts of pollutants also failed. What is the probability that a car that fails the test actually emits excessive amounts of pollutants? Students, aye is problem ko step by step analyze karte hain aur dekhte hain ke ye kis tarah se Bayes theorem ka formula jo maine aapko abhi present kiya uske saath tally karta hai. सबसे पहली बात ये कि आपने देखा कि कहा गया कि 25 percent of the cars emit excessive amounts of pollutants. तो साफ जाहिर है कि 75 percent of the cars are such which do not emit excessive amounts. अब जो हमारी condition थी for the Bayes theorem that A1, A2 
um, form a partition of the sample space aap dekhiye ki yahan pe ye baat puri ho rahi hai a1 represents the the event that the car does emit excessive amounts of pollutants whereas a2 represents the event that it does not so together these two events are mutually exclusive and exhaustive and hence they do form a partition of the sample space ye to hui pehli baat agli baat ye ke base theorem mein kaha gaya ke if b is another event which occurs only if one of the ai occur to is example mein wo dusra event jo hai that is that the car fails this test yani कार जो है या वो एक्सेसिव अमाउंट्स इमिट कर रही है या वो नहीं कर रही लेकिन फेल जो वो होगी तो वो उन दोनों बातों में से किसी एक बात के होते हुए इट माइट स्टिल फेल द टेस्ट तो देफोर दिस इज द इवेंट विच विल बी रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय बी अब जबकि हमने ए वन ए टू और बी तीनों को आइडेंटिफाई कर लिया है तो आइए हम उस फॉर्मूले को दोबारा देखते हैं एज यू सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द फॉर्मूला फॉर द केस ऑफ टू म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव इवेंट्स ए वन एंड ए टू ए प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए आई गिवन बी इज इक्वल टू प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए आई इन टू प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ बी गिवन ए आई डिवाइडेड बाई पी ऑफ ए वन इन टू पी ऑफ बी गिवन ए वन प्लस पी ऑफ ए टू इन टू पी ऑफ बी गिवन ए टू स्टूडेंट्स इसमें जो डिनोमिनेटर है उसमें तो आप देख रहे हैं कि कोई प्रॉब्लम ही नहीं है यानी ए वन और ए टू और बी का जिक्र है और उनको हम आइडेंटिफाई कर चुके हैं लेकिन शायद आप कंफ्यूज हो रहे हों कि उसका जो न्यूमिनेटर है उसमें ये ए आई क्या है दिस फॉर्मूला विल बी अप्लाइड इट कैन बी अप्लाइड टू टाइम्स अगर आप आई को वन रखें तो नेचुरली द फॉर्मूला विल बी रेड as you now see on the screen p of a1 given b is equal to p of a1 into p of b given a1 over the same denominator as before and if we put i equal to 2 we have p of a2 given b is equal to p of a2 into p of b given a2 divided by द सेम डिनोमिनेटर अब सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि इस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल में हम पी ऑफ ए वन गिवन बी कंप्यूट करना चाहते हैं या पी ऑफ ए टू गिवन बी इफ वी गो बैक टू द क्वेश्चन ऑफ दिस एग्जाम्पल इट सेड वॉट इज द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट अ कार दैट फेल्स द टेस्ट एक्चुअली इमिट्स एक्सेसिव अमाउंट ऑफ पोल्यूशन इस जुमले को हम इस तरह से भी तो स्टेट कर सकते हैं ना कि व्हाट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट द कार विल इमेट एक्सेसिव अमाउंट्स ऑफ पोल्यूटेंट्स गिवन द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इट हैज फेल्ड द टेस्ट मेरी इस बात पे गौर कीजिए और ये बड़ा अहम है कि आप ये एबिलिटी uh, डेवलप करें अपने अंदर कि एक आम स्टेटमेंट को जो बज़ाहिर एक बिल्कुल आम सी स्टेटमेंट है इसको आप मैथमेटिकल uh, सेंस में उस तरीके से इंटरप्रेट कर सकें जिस तरह से उसे इंटरप्रेट किया जाना चाहिए मैं दोबारा कहती हूँ हमारी स्टेटमेंट थी व्हाट इज़ द प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट अ कार दैट फेल्स द टेस्ट एक्चुअली इमेट्स एक्सेसिव अमाउंट्स ऑफ पोल्यूटेंट्स दिस कैन आल्सो बी स्टेटेड एज वॉट इज़ द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट द कार इमेट्स एक्सेसिव अमाउंट्स ऑफ पोल्यूटेंट्स गिवन दैट इट हैज फेल्ड द टेस्ट जैसा कि आपको याद होगा मैंने आपसे यही कहा था ना कि लेट ए वन बी दी इवेंट दैट द कार डज इमेट एक्सेसिव अमाउंट एंड ए टू द इवेंट दैट द कार डज नॉट इमेट एक्सेसिव अमाउंट ऑफ पोल्यूटेंट तो अगर इस तरह से हमने डिफाइन किया तो फिर जाहिर है कि अब हम इस वक्त जो प्रॉबिलिटी निकालना चाह रहे हैं दैट इज प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए वन गिवन बी इसलिए कि जैसे अभी हमने स्लाइड पर देखा वी आर वॉन्टिंग द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ द इवेंट दैट द कार इमिट्स 
excessive amounts of pollutants given that um, it has failed the test. So, applying the formula that I presented to you, probability of A1 given B is equal to probability of A1 into probability of B given A1 over P of A1 into P of B given A1 plus P of A2 into P of B given A2. In this question, we have available to us the values of P of A1, P of B given A1 and P of B given A2. This is why that this information in our example ka jo statement tha, uske andar available. Hai. As you see on the screen once again, the statement was when tested, 99% of all cars that emit excessive amounts of pollutants failed, but 17% of the cars that do not emit excessive amounts of pollutants also failed. These two statements can also be read as follows. The probability that a car will fail given that it emits excessive amounts is 99%, whereas the probability that a car will fail given that it does not emit excessive amounts of pollutants is 17%. In other words, P of B given A1 is 0 0.99 and P of B given A2 is 0 0.17. So, students, we can now substitute these values in the formula and as you see on the screen, probability of A1 given B is equal to 0 0.25 into 0 0.99 over 0 0.25 into 0 0.99 plus 0 0.75 into 0 0.17 and this comes out to be 0 0.66. Students, is may shayad aap ko thodi si confusion ho ke values kis tarah se aayin. Aap ko yaad hi hai ke probability that the car emits excessive amounts is 25%. So naturally, the probability that the car does not emit excessive amounts will be 75% because the two events are the complements of each other. Or baki sari explanation abhi hum discuss kar chuke hain. So having uh, applied the formula, then the final result is 0.66. Yani, the probability is 66% that a car that fails the test actually emits excessive amounts of pollutants. Students, ye jo example humne consider kiya. This was the simplest case when k is equal to 2 only. But of course, it can be extended to the case when k is equal to 3, 4 or more. Let us consider another example. In a bolt factory, 25% of the bolts are produced by machine A, 35% are produced by machine B, and the remaining 40% are produced by machine C. Of their outputs, 2%, 4%, and 5% respectively of the bolts are defective. If one bolt is selected at random and it is found to be defective, what is the probability that it came from machine A? Students, in this example, you can see that we have three mutually exclusive or exhaustive events. Hain. Yani, either the bolt is being produced by machine A or by B or by C. Or is ke lava koi machine nahi hai. Or 100% of the bolts, yani tamam tar bolts jo hai, they are covered by these three machines. 25% by A, 35% by B, and 40% by C. To hamari jo bunyadi requirement thi na, ke A1, A2, A3 vagara jo hai, 
दे शुड बी म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव एंड एग्जॉस्टिव आप नोट करें कि ये शर्त यहाँ पे पूरी हो रही है बोल्ट कैन आइदर कम फ्रॉम मशीन ए और फ्रॉम मशीन बी ये तो नहीं हो सकता ना कि बैक वक्त हम कहें कि वो मशीन ए से भी आ रहा है और बी से भी आ रहा है वो एक बोल्ट जाहिर है कि एक वक्त में कोई एक बोल्ट जब उठाएंगे इट विल बी कमिंग फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द थ्री मशीन एग्जॉस्टिव इसलिए हुआ कि 25% प्लस 35% प्लस 40% परसेंट प्लस फोर्टी परसेंट इज वन हंड्रेड परसेंट दैट इज वन सो स्टूडेंट्स ये जो हमारा बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट था दैट ए वन ए टू ए थ्री शुड फॉर्म अ पार्टीशन ऑफ द सैम्पल स्पेस ये बात यहाँ पे पूरी हो रही और वो जो दूसरा इवेंट है जिस जिसको हम बी कहेंगे इस एग्जाम्पल में दैट इज दैट द बोल्ट इज डिफेक्टिव यानी जो बोल्ट उठाया गया एट रैंडम दैट केम आउट टू बी डिफेक्टिव और हम निकालना क्या चाहते हैं कि वॉट इज द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट द बोल्ट केम फ्रॉम मशीन ए गिवन दिस फैक्ट दैट इट इज डिफेक्टिव तो आप देखिए कि इसका तो यही मतलब है ना कि वी आर ट्राइंग टू कंप्यूट पी ऑफ ए वन गिवन बी द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट द बोल्ट हैज कम फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट मशीन गिवन द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट इट इज डिफेक्टिव नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनकरेज यू टू अप्लाई द बेस थेरम टू दिस एग्जाम्पल एंड टू सॉल्व इट योर सेल्फ इन ऑर्डर टू डिटर्मिन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉबिलिटी और राइट दिस ब्रिंग्स आस टू द एंड ऑफ द डिस्कशन of some of the very basic and important concepts of probability i will now begin with you the next very very important topic and that is probability distributions as i mentioned in the very beginning there are two types of quantitative variables the discrete variable and the continuous variable and accordingly there are two types of probability distributions the discrete probability distribution and the continuous probability distribution i will first discuss with you the case of discrete probability distributions and in this regard the first thing that we will do is to consider what is meant by the term random variable as you now see on the screen such a numerical quantity whose value is determined by the outcome of a random experiment is called a random variable aapko yaad hoga ki random experiment ki baat to pehle bhi ho chuki hai it is um, any experiment in which the outcome is unpredictable um, for example if we toss a pair of dice um, we know that there are 36 possible outcomes lekin jab tak ke wo zameen par land nahi kar jate we cannot say ki what which of those 36 outcomes is going to occur isi tarah if we consider the case of uh, tossing three coins simultaneously students you will uh, recall that the sample space of this particular random experiment consists of eight outcomes head 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 tail head tail head tail head head and so on अगर हम सीक्वेंस um, जो है उसमें इंटरेस्टेड ना हो बल्कि सिर्फ इस बात में इंटरेस्टेड हो कि वॉट इज द नंबर ऑफ हेड्स दैट अपियर स्टूडेंट्स देन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ रैंडम वेरिएबल द रैंडम वेरिएबल एक्स डिनोट्स द नंबर ऑफ हेड्स दैट अपियर एंड इन दिस एग्जाम्पल दिस नंबर कैन बी जीरो वन टू और थ्री if we get tail 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 it is obvious that x is equal to 0 yani number of heads is 0 and if we have for example head head tail how much is x obviously x is equal to 2 um now that the basic concept of a random variable is clear the next question is what kind of a random variable are we dealing with obviously in this particular example that i just presented x is a discrete random variable because it can take the value 0 no head 1 one, one head 
2 or 3. But obviously, we cannot have 2.9 heads or 1.7 heads. So, because we are dealing with a discrete random variable, hence the associated probability distribution will be called a discrete probability distribution. And um, you will be interested in noticing as we study this uh, topic that there you will find a number of similarities between the discrete probability distribution and the discrete frequency distribution that we dealt with in an earlier lecture. Let us now study this concept in detail with the help of an example. If a biologist is interested in the number of petals on a particular flower, this number may take the values 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and each one of these numbers will have its own probability. Suppose that upon observing a large number of flowers of this particular species, say 1000 flowers, the following results are obtained. The x values are 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and the frequencies are 50, 100, 200, 300, 250, 75 and 25. Students, abhi jo table aapne screen pe dekhi, obviously this is a frequency distribution. Aur aap kahenge ki phir ye to woh concept hai jo hum bahut pehle us waqt study kar rahe the, jo frequencies ko deal kar rahe the. But if you remember the relative frequency definition of probability and you relate that definition with this particular example, you will realize that the total number of flowers that have been inspected in this problem that is 1000 and 1000 is a reasonably large number for us to treat the relative frequencies for the various values of x as probabilities. After all, relative frequency definition of probability yahi thi na ke if an experiment is repeated again and again and again and again a large number of times then the proportion in which a certain event occurs that proportion can be regarded as the probability. So in this example if I compute the relative frequencies or in other words the proportion of flowers uh, that had three petals, four petals, five petals and so on, these proportions are eligible to be treated as probabilities. So as you now see on the screen, we can say that the probability that x is equal to 3 is 50 over 1000 that is 0 0.05. The probability that x is equal to 4 is 100 over 1000 and that is 0 0.10 and similarly all the other probabilities. In other words, the probability that a flower of this particular species contains 3 petals is only 5 percent. The probability that a flower of this species contains four petals is 10 percent, five petals 20 percent probability, six petals 30 percent probability, seven 25 percent probability, eight petals only 0 0.075 is the probability of this event and for nine petals it is only 0 0.025 that is 2.5 percent. Students, ye jo table abhi aapke saamne present ki gai, this is an example of a discrete probability distribution. Ye teen alfaz jo maine istemal kiye, aayye in pe ghor karte hain. Pehli baat ye ke discrete kyun keh rahe hain? That is most obvious. The number of petals on a flower will be 3, 4, 5, Sava panch petals to nahi hongi na. Ab aap argue karenge ke ji ho sakta hai ke wo 6 petals thi 
लेकिन उसमें से एक पेटल में से तीन चौथाई हिस्सा जो है वो एक कीड़ा खा गया है इसलिए अब सवा पाँच पेटल्स बाकी बची या इट कैन बी आर्ग्यूड इन दिस मैनर बट दिस इज नॉट द वे दैट वी विल बी इंटरप्रेटिंग इट फ्रॉम द मैथमेटिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू जिस वक्त वो फ्लावर प्रोड्यूस हुआ था उस वक्त तो उसमें सिक्स ही थी ना और उस हिसाब से इट विल ऑलवेज बी अ होल नंबर इसके बाद जो दो अल्फाज हैं प्रॉबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन स्टूडेंट्स आप नोट कीजिए दैट द टोटल प्रॉबिलिटी वन हैज बीन डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड अमंग द वेरियस वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स एज यू वंस अगेन सी ऑन द स्क्रीन फाइव परसेंट ऑफ एट हैज बीन एलोकेटेड टू एक्स इक्वल टू थ्री टेन परसेंट ऑफ एट हैज बीन एलोकेटेड टू एक्स इक्वल टू फोर एंड सो ऑन and this is exactly the reason why we say probability distribution bilkul isi tarah jaise ke frequency distribution ki discussion ke waqt maine aap se kaha ke total frequency has been distributed among the various classes students a discrete probability distribution has two basic properties as you now see on the screen the first property is that the probability of xi lies between 0 and 1 for each xi and the second property states that the sum of the probabilities is equal to 1 in the example that we just considered you can notice that each of these properties is being fulfilled as will be the case for any discrete probability distribution let us now consider the graphical representation of a discrete probability distribution aapko yaad hai na ke jab hum frequency distribution ko discuss kar rahe the to humne bahut se graphs consider kiye the of course in the case of the continuous variable we talked about the histogram and the frequency polygon and the frequency curve but if you remember in the case of the frequency distribution of a discrete variable i proposed that you draw a line chart this is exactly the chart that we will be drawing for the discrete probability distribution as well and for the example that we just considered we have the following situation since x1 is equal to 3 and the probability of this x value is 0.05 hence the length or the height of the first line is 0.05 similarly the height of the second line is 0.10 the, the one for the third is 0.20 and so on hence we get the line chart that you now see on the screen and I think that you will agree with me that we can say that this particular discrete probability distribution is approximately symmetric. आपने नोट किया कि मैंने symmetry का concept यहाँ पे आपको दिया यानी बिल्कुल वही concept जिसका जिक्र हम उस वक्त कर रहे थे जब हम frequency distributions को discuss कर रहे थे लेकिन सिमिट्री या स्क्यूनेस या कटोसिस की बात तो बाद में हुई थी सबसे पहले तो हमने मीन और उसके बाद स्प्रेड का जिक्र किया था तो इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि डिस्क्रीट प्रॉबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के केस में भी स्क्यूनेस वगैरह को तो शायद हम बाद में मेजर करें सबसे पहले हम उसकी मीन या उसकी सेंट्रल वैल्यू और उसके स्प्रेड या उसकी स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन को कंप्यूट करने की कोशिश करेंगे एज यू सी ऑन द स्क्रीन वंस अगेन दिस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज अप्रॉक्सिमेटली सिमेट्रिक एंड इन बिकॉज ऑफ दैट यू माइट अग्री विद मी दैट वी कैन से दैट द मीन नंबर ऑफ पेटल्स फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल इज सिक्स एंड वी आर सेंग दिस because the central value of our random variable x in this problem 
is 6. Students, zahir hai ki ye to ek estimate hai of the center because I have not computed the mean according to the proper formula. How will I do that if I wish to compute the exact mean of this particular random variable? In order to understand this, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the formula is very similar actually to the formula that we have in the case of a frequency distribution. As you will remember, the formula for x bar was sigma fx over sigma f and this can also be written as sigma xf over sigma f yani x ko pehle keh dijiye aur f ko baad mein keh dijiye to koi fark to nahi padta na now the next point to realize is that in that situation we had a column of frequencies but now we have a column of probabilities so instead of f I can write P and my formula will become sigma xp over sigma p. But sigma p, the sum of the probabilities is 1 and hence the formula becomes sigma xp over 1 that is sigma xp and this is exactly the formula for the mean of a discrete probability distribution. Formally speaking, the mean of a discrete probability distribution is equal to sigma x into p of x. And in this particular example, if we multiply the x column with the column of p of x, we obtain 0 0.15, 0 0.40, 1.00, 1.80 and so on. And upon adding this particular column, the mean of this particular probability distribution comes out to be 5.925. So, you have seen that our goal was that this distribution is almost symmetric, just as the line chart was written. ये इस आंसर से वैलिडेट हो रहा है इसलिए कि 5.925 इज वेरी क्लोज टू 6 और अगर ये डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एग्जैक्टली सिमेट्रिकल होती तो ये आंसर एग्जैक्टली 6 होता आप शायद कंफ्यूज हो रहे हो कि जब मैंने आपको पहले एक्सप्लेन किया तो मैंने कहा कि सिग्मा x into p और अब मैं कह रही हूं सिग्मा x into p of x well that was only to explain the point that f is being replaced by p, the probability. Lekin formally, probability of x is always denoted as p of x. Yani, sirf p nahi likhte, balke p of x hi likha jata hai. In fact, in many situations, we do not even write p of x, rather we write f of x. और अगर आप किसी किताब में ये नोटेशन देखें तो प्लीज डू नॉट मेक्स एफ ऑफ एक्स विद एफ अगर सिर्फ एफ लिखा है तो इसका मतलब है फ्रीक्वेंसी मगर एफ ऑफ एक्स अगर किसी डिस्क्रीट प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए लिखा गया है तो इट रिप्रेजेंट्स प्रोबेबिलिटी नेक्स्ट वी कंसीडर द स्प्रेड ऑफ द प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन as you see on the screen, in case of a frequency distribution, the formula for the standard deviation is the square root of sigma fx square over sigma f minus sigma fx over sigma f whole square, exactly the same shortcut formula that we discussed in an earlier lecture. Now, this can also be written as square root of sigma x square f over sigma f minus sigma x f over sigma f whole square. But in case of a probability distribution, we will be replacing the frequencies by the probabilities and our formula now becomes square root of 
sigma x square into p of x over sigma p of x minus sigma x p x over sigma p x whole square. But because of the fact that the sum of the probabilities of a discrete probability distribution is 1, the values in the denominator become equal to 1 and our formula reduces to the square root of sigma x square p of x minus sigma x p x whole square. In order to apply this formula for the example of the number of petals on the flowers of a particular species or for any other such example, of course, we should multiply the x column with the column of probabilities in order to obtain x into p of x just as we did in the case of the mean and we will have to create another column and that is the column of x square into p of x which will be obtained by multiplying the column of x by the column of x into p of x. So as you see on the screen in this case, multiplying 3 by 0 0.05 gives us 0 0.15 and multiplying 0 0.15 by 3, we get 0 0.45. The sums of these columns are 5.925 and 36.925 and substituting them in the formula, we obtain the standard deviation of x equal to 1.3. Students, the notation for the mean of a probability distribution is mu and the notation for the standard deviation is sigma. The sigma that I am talking about now is the small sigma of the Greek alphabet. As you know, capital sigma stands for summation. Now that we have computed the mean and the standard deviation of our probability distribution, students, we can represent it on the graph of our distribution exactly in the same manner as we did in case of a discrete frequency distribution. So as you now see on the screen, the mean of this particular probability distribution is 5.925 and the standard deviation is represented by a horizontal line segment which is equal to 1.3 units. Now that we have computed both the standard deviation and the mean of our distribution, students, is it not obvious that we can also compute the coefficient of variation? As you remember, in case of a frequency distribution, the coefficient of variation is defined as s over x bar into 100. So in the case of a probability distribution, it will be defined as sigma over mu into 100. And as you now see on the slide, the coefficient of variation for this particular example comes out to be 21.9 percent. Students, abhi abhi humne jo example ki, aapne note kiya ke usme jo probabilities hain, we arrived at those by the relative frequency definition of probability. Lekin aap jante hi hain ke there are certain situations where probabilities are arrived at according to the classical definition. So, let us consider another example in which we obtain the probabilities using the classical definition of probability. As you now see on the screen, if we are interested in finding the probability distribution of the sum of the dots when two fair dice are thrown, we are going to apply the classical definition of probability. In this problem, we are also interested in utilizing this probability distribution in order to find the probabilities of obtaining number one, a sum that is greater than eight and number two, a sum that is greater than five 
but less than or equal to 10. In order to solve this problem, students, the first thing to realize is that if the dice are fair, this is going to be the case of equally likely outcomes and we are going to be able to apply the classical definition of probability. And we do make this assumption. We will assume that the dice are properly made and they are fair and so we apply this definition and according to this definition we have to compute probabilities of the form m over n where n is the total number of possible outcomes whereas m is the number of outcomes favoring what we want. So, ab is silsile mein hum step by step proceed karte hain. Sabse pehle the sample space of this experiment. As you remember, the total number of possible outcomes is 36. Which ones are they? 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3 and so on. Uske baad, hume note karna hai ke jis random variable mein hum interested hai, that is the sum of the dots on the two dice. And students, you will realize immediately that it is a discrete random variable. Why? Because 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3 and so on. Or aapko sum 2.7 ya 4.9 to kisi situation mein bhi nahi milega. They are all going to be whole numbers and they range from 2 to 12. 1 plus 1 as I said is 2 but the last outcome 6 and 6 gives us a sum of 12. Ab jab ke sample space determined ho gai, to ab probabilities or us table ki baat kare, jo hume construct karni hai, in order to construct the probability distribution. So, as you see on the screen, we will first create the column of x, which goes from 2 to 12, and then we create the column of probabilities p of x which is to be filled out in such a way that the sum of the column will come out to be 1. Now, in order to fill out this column, of course, we should count the number of outcomes that are favoring a sum of 2, a sum of 3, a sum of 4 and so on. Or agar aap apni sample space ko ghor se dekhe, to as you see on the screen, the number of outcomes that favor a sum of 2 is only 1 and that is 1, 1. So, the probability that x is equal to 2, where x represents the sum of the dots on the two dice is 1 by 36. Similarly, in order to compute the probability that the sum is equal to 3, we notice that there are two outcomes that favor this particular sum and they are 1, 2 and 2, 1. Hence, the probability that x is equal to 3 is 2 by 36. Isi tarah se, we can compute all the probabilities or agar aap us uh, sample space ko dekhe, to ye kafi interesting cheez aapko nazar aegi ke aap diagonally chalte jayenge aur aapko wo sums jo particular sums chahiye un diagonals ke against milte jate hain. So, as you now see on the screen, the probability distribution for this particular example is x is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and the probabilities are 1 by 36, 2 by 36 and so on. They keep on rising until they attain the value 6 by 36 against a sum of 7 and then they decline and we have 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Jaisa ke aapne note kiya, in probabilities ke jo numerators hai, pehle wo increase kar rahe hai in a steady fashion and then they decline in the same manner in, in a mirror image way and hence I hope you realize that if we draw the line chart of this particular 
distribution it will be absolutely symmetric. Lekin is problem mein hamara jo agla question tha aapko yaad hoga ke wo ye tha ke we should compute the probability of the event that our sum is greater than 8. How do we proceed? Obviously, greater than 8 means either 8 or 9 or 10, 11, 12. Or ye jo loves or istemal hua that reminds us of the addition theorem and the special case of the addition theorem probability of A or B if A and B are mutually exclusive is equal to probability of A plus the probability of B. So, extending this um, theorem to the case of more than two events, we obtain in this example, as you see on the screen, the probability that x is greater than 8 is equal to the probability that x is equal to 9 or 10 or 11 or 12 and that is equal to the probability that x is equal to 9 plus the probability that x is equal to 10 plus the probability that x equal to 11 plus the probability that x is equal to 12. Applying the values of these probabilities in this formula, the probability that we obtain a sum greater than 8 comes out to be 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 by 36 and that is 10 by 36. Similarly, the other part of the question was find the probability that the sum is greater than 5 but less than or equal to 10 and this is equal to the probability of x equal to 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 and adding those probabilities this particular probability comes out to be 23 by 36. All right now that we have discussed the concept of the discrete probability distribution in considerable detail humne uska basic format dekha just two columns a column of x and a column of probabilities such that the sum is one humne uski shape ke bare mein understanding hasil ki humne uski central value aur uske spread ki baat ki the next concept that I would like to discuss with you is the concept of the distribution function. As you now see on the screen, the distribution function of a random variable x denoted by capital F of x is defined as the probability that capital X is less than or equal to small x. Students, is me aapne note kiya ke maine kaha capital F of x or capital F ke saath jo bracket hai uske andar jo x likha gaya hai that is a small x or maine kaha ke ye kis cheez ko represent karta hai the probability that capital X our random variable capital X is less than or equal to small x. So, ab kafi confusing lag raha hoga ke what is the difference between capital X and small x. Students, capital X represents the random variable that we are talking about and small x represents some particular value of the random variable. In other words, if I am interested in determining the probability that the sum of the dots on the two dice is less than or equal to 5, I am talking about capital F of 5. As you see on the screen, capital F of 5 is equal to the probability that capital X is less than or equal to 5 and this is equal to the probability that X is equal to 2 
or 3 or 4 or 5 and because of the fact that all these events are mutually exclusive and they cannot occur together this probability is equal to the probability that x is equal to 2 plus the probability that x is equal to 3 plus the probability that x is equal to 4 plus the probability that x is equal to 5. Substituting the values of these probabilities in the formula, we obtain 1 by 36 plus 2 by 36 plus 3 by 36 plus 4 by 36 and evidently this is equal to 10 by 36. In other words, students, the distribution function of a discrete probability distribution is simply the cumulation of the probabilities from the beginning up to that particular value that we are talking about. In this case, 5. Aapne dekha ki ye concept bilkul usi tarah hai jis tarah se we discussed the concept of the cumulative frequency distribution. As you see on the screen, if we construct the column of cumulative probabilities for the same example that we just discussed, we obtain 1 by 36, 3 by 36, 6 by 36, 10 by 36 and so on. And the last one, the one against x equal to 12, comes out to be 36 by 36 exactly equal to 1. These cumulative probabilities represent capital F of x and as you can see the probability that x is less than or equal to 5 that is 10 by 36 it is seen at a glance if we have a look at the column of the cumulative probabilities. So, you have seen ke ye jo concept hai this is also a very useful concept aapko jab kabhi bhi kisi particular value ya usse kam values ke occur hone ki probability chahiye ho you can think of the distribution function capital f of x students next time we will uh, take this concept a bit further and after that i will discuss with you in a formal mathematical manner, the concept of mathematical expectation. I wish you the very best in your study of this new topic that we have started today. And until next time, Allah Hafiz.